what is up what is up we are back in black in the building shout out to everybody out there at the core plantation doing what they got to do to survive roll call shout out to everybody out there in arizona miss tanya latanya shout out to them shout out to everybody in vegas all my peeps siblings everybody out here chilling in there everywhere just chilling man shout out to vegas man vegas man they getting ready to close in the, the mirage and everything they fucking up but anyway we'll get on that another time so shout out to everybody all my siblings shout out to the homegirl jerrick out there in las vegas nevada oh uh, man shout out to the homegirl shawnee philly in the building that's my sis shout out to our family shout out to the homegirl erica florida aka florida in the building shout out to my brothers my ogs james youngblood texas in the building david from no compromise tv y'all need to check him out man check out all his lives check out everything on instagram that brother be dropping jewels joe's in the building man 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 last but not least shout out to the home girl melina from north carolina aka north kakalaka y'all hear me shout them out because these are people that i actually talk to and they deal with me and i deal with them so that's why once we, you know if we talk i probably you know shout you out but if i don't really you know talk to you that much i ain't just gonna just be saying your name like that that's all but those are people that i've you know been around and chop it up but anyway shout out to everybody out there man we got a great one today we got a quick we got a great one see my boy's talking all that shit about diddy and bill cosby and marcellus wiley and cuba good jr and every nigga they could dig up that foundational black american well we got people like david copperfield if you look at my thumbnail that's a picture of David Copperfield, and he has been accused of sexual misconduct and assault. And why aren't they canceling him? That's why the title of this today is The Magic Touch. Because, <laughs> you know, David Copperfield liked to do magic tricks. Well, I think he was trying to show one of them girls his magic stick. <laughs> So let's get into it. <laughs> oh man. Hey, hey. Don't get me the flowing in this one. No, I'm just playing. I'm just playing with y'all. Here, let me see. Let me see. I'm looking for some audio. And we're gonna see what they are talking about. Here we go. Let's see. Sexual assault are coming to light tonight against strip headliner David Copperfield. But tonight, the magician responding with a simple message, don't rush to judgment. 13 Action News reporter. Don't rush to judgment. You see how the dominant society play us? So we're not supposed to rush to judgment for him, but R. Kelly, we just, just all guilty. Even though parents were sending their children and their 18-year-old kids and 17-year-old kids up there with R. Kelly. Sending them up there, giving them permission to do whatever. Don't let these people fool you. And then when R. Kelly wasn't paying these people no money, Oh my God, man, he just sexually assaulted my daughter and she don't want to leave and I don't know what I'm going to do, y'all. Like, man, get, man, stop. Stop with the bullshit. Brian Callen. Because he do magic tricks, but what he really is doing is trying to show them girls his magic stick. Now, all of a sudden, we, we ain't supposed to be rushing to judgment. Oh, he doing magic tricks, all right. Stop. And is live outside MGM with how Copperfield is using history to defend himself. Brian. Oh, you don't want to use history because we go back in history. We're going to talk to Thomas Jefferson, George Washington, Abraham Lincoln. All those white supremacists were raping and sexually mis sexually assaulting and having sexual misconduct with a lot of the slave women. Stop. That's why you have what's called the mulatto class and mulatto children. Stop. So you don't want to use history. Yeah, just hours before taking the stage for a pair of shows here at the MGM Grand, Copperfield tweeted out his statement saying he will, quote, weather another storm, highlighting the previous investigation from a decade ago. As new allegations were published accusing David Copperfield of inappropriate actions with a 17-year-old model, Copperfield took to social media expressing support for the Me Too movement despite being falsely accused in the past. Uh -huh. The latest allegations, published by news and entertainment site The Wrap, feature details of a reported incident in a California hotel room with a 17-year-old who says she met Copperfield when she was part of a modeling contest the magician judged in 1988. All right, y'all heard that. Y'all heard that. 
The woman says she went to the FBI in 2007 when the agency was investigating an allegation by another woman. The magician was never charged in that case. In fact, his accuser was eventually arrested for making false sexual assault allegations against another man. Copperfield addressed that previous investigation in an interview with Oprah Winfrey on her own network back in 2012. Devastating. First of all, once they mention Oprah, I'm done. She tried to publicly shame Michael Jackson and then jump on that damn documentary disparaging Michael Jackson. Man, man fuck Oprah. Man, ugh, ugh, no. For yourself, your friends, your family, really bad. When the truth comes out, you know, that she was arrested, not me. Uh, you don't have to be arrested to be accused of sexual assault, and you don't have to be arrested to be guilty. Harvey Weinstein is guilty, but you see that the courts didn't overturn what the fuck he got going on, so I don't want to hear none of that shit. You better use one of them magic tricks and, 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 and vanquish and get the fuck out of the United States of America. That's what you need to do. Finally, things, you know, come to light. The statement didn't directly address any of the details of this latest report. It just asked everyone to listen and carefully consider everything and said, don't rush to judgment. Reporting live, Brian Kelly. Yeah, that's some bullshit. They tell us don't rush to judgment. They tell us don't rush to judgment. But you see what the fuck he got going on. Let me see what other audio we can find. Because I don't want to hear nothing about him talking no damn Oprah. I don't give a damn about no, no Oprah. Get your ass out of here. Let's see. Let's see, accused, uh, let's see what we can find. Let's see, let's see, let's see what they talking about right here. Hell yeah, I'm putting his ass on black. American magician David Copperfield has been accused of drugging and sexually assaulting a 17-year-old model in 1988. Britain. 1988. So he been doing the shit too. Since y'all went after uh, Bill Cosby and went after shit, these bitches was committing... Those Janice Dickinson committed perjury too. They didn't say shit to her. They didn't discredit her. They still try to put Bill Cosby behind bars, and they did. But he thinking, oh man, it don't matter. I don't give a fuck if it was in 1788. Guilty motherfucker. Shit, I don't care about none of that shit. And if it was in 1788, you know he did it. So, so stop. Lewis came forward with the allegations on Wednesday, just hours after Copperfield expressed support for the hashtag MeToo movement while warning against rushing to judgment about allegations of sexual misconduct. She claims the magician invited her to one of his California shows after judging a modeling contest which she was competing in. Copperfield's statement on Instagram suggests he may have been aware that Lewis was about to go public with her allegations. He said he had been falsely accused before back in 2007 and was having to, quote, weather another storm. Uh-huh. Here, let me let me let me let me uh, read something else that I saw. Hold on, let's see. Hold on, let me see. Let me see. Oh man, what's going on with my uh there we go. Alright, there we go. Here, I'm pulling up right now, because you know how these you know how these motherfuckers wanna do. They don't wanna show you the shit. Hold on, so let me let me, I'm off to read something. I gotta read this to y'all. Okay, so, magician David Carperfield is facing accusations of sexual misconduct and inappropriate behavior from 16 women, according to reports. Over half of the alleged offenses happened when the victims were under the age of 18, found an investigation by the Guardian US. Some were potentially as young as 15 at the time of the alleged misconduct, the Guardian said, and the magician sending some underage girl notes, gifts, and balloons. 67-year-old has denied the allegations against him, which stretched from the late 1980s to 2014. In his considering legal action, a representative told the Independent some of the alleged abuse included drugging three women before having sexual relations with them. Oh! Isn't that what y'all said Bill Cosby did? But y'all had no evidence. Which then they said they did not feel able to consent to. I would never just say this to somebody if I did it truly honest to God, believe that I was drugged at the time. 
One victim told The Guardian she said that she agreed to meet Copperfield for a drink in 1993 after one of his shows. Another alleged victim said that she met the magician at one of his shows when she was 15. He approached her and her mother in the parking lot after she appeared on stage with him at a show in Savannah, Georgia. Hmm. He took her phone number, she said, and handed her a business card with a promise that he would take her to dinner when she turned 18. At one point, the woman said she sent her he sent her a note promising he would be back in two years. The magician often called her home and her mother would have to wake her up to chat chat to him. See? So why is he not being penalized? That's the same shit that was happening to R. Kelly. That's the same shit. You don't think parents were trying to shove their kids down R. Kelly's throat type shit because they want to get paid? You don't think that woman wanted to get paid? After she turned 18, the woman said Mr. Cooper had penetrated sex with her. It was her first time she said, oh, I was a young schoolgirl infatuated with a man who was famous and I think he used that to benefit him, she told The Guardian. Why would he continue to reach out to me through those years if he wasn't planning on pouncing as soon as I turned 18? AKA fucking as soon as I turned 18. In four cases, women said the magician groped them or made them touch him in a sexual manner during live performances on stage. Ah, hold on, let me see, let me see, let's see, let's see. All right, hold on. Mr. Copperfield was mentioned six, six times in documents related to the late convicted sex offender Jeffrey Epstein, which were made public in January. Oh, oh, okay. In a deposition, Johanna Soldierberg, a former international swimmer who claimed Prince Andrew, the Duke of York, touched her breast in 2001 at Epstein's Manhattan townhome, stated that Mr. Copperfield had dinner with the disgraced financier in a 2016 deposition among documents released earlier this year. Miss Soldierberg said Mr. Copperfield did magic tricks before asking if she was aware that girls were getting paid to find other girls. So he knew what Ghislaine Maxwell and Jeffrey Epstein was doing. So if you knew what they were doing, you weren't a beneficiary, beneficiary of what they were doing? One of, one of the key allegations against Epstein and his ex-partner convicted sex offender Ghislaine Maxwell was that some of the girls he paid for sex acts then acted as recruiters to find him other victims. Miss Soldierberg said Mr. Copperfield didn't get more specific about what he meant. Mr. Copperfield's relationship with Epstein has been previously reported, including in 2019 article from the New York Times, which described the role of Maxwell in acquiring young girls for the disgraced financier. Wow. So now that we got that out the way, I just thought I would let y'all know that. So while all y'all niggas out there talking about you, man, R. Kelly did this, R. Kelly did that, and Bill Cosby did this, Bill Cosby did that, and, and, and Cuba Gooden Jr., you shouldn't have been smiling. And this person, see, that's what he did. Because, see, he was hanging around them people and them white people and all that stuff. See, why y'all doing that? Do y'all see any dominant society motherfucker coming out against David Copperfield? No, you do not. On the record, only Ashley Judd and her family came out against Je uh, Harvey Weinstein. Nobody else dare speak Harvey Weinstein's name besides the great Dame Dash. He's the only motherfucker that was like, man, fuck Harvey Weinstein. He been doing shit like that. Y'all late. Everybody else was too scared, too afraid to say anything and go up against Harvey Weinstein. To this day, ain't nobody came out and said shit. David Copperfield been doing magic tricks, pulling out his magic stick to underage girls since the 80s. And even if they ain't underage, that's sexual misconduct. You ain't... Let a nigga go, let a nigga do a, a, a damn uh, magic trick and then say, hey, I want to do a magic show for you. Oh, okay. That's one thing about sisters that I appreciate. Sisters don't play that shit. A sister been done went upside that white motherfucker's head trying that bullshit. <laughs> FBA women don't play that shit. Go do a magic trick for an FBA sister and then pull out your shit. And see what happened. You better hope she ain't gang affiliated or got cousins or brothers from a, a set if she in California. Because it's been one for you, my nigga. And don't even think you finna do that with any other racial group. 
they gonna have your picture plastered all over the goddamn news before you even unzip your pants, nigga. You you could be you could be tightening your belt, and the police show up, say, man, somebody said that you pulled you pulled your your, your genitals out on woman. Man, I was just tightening my belt. Well, that's not what they said. Guilty, nigga. So I don't understand how this is happening. I'm going to keep finding shit. I found another article, a, a sergeant or a lieutenant or a retired sergeant was, was sexually assaulting 14-year-olds and shit. And he's supposed to be a sergeant in the Air Force. Now, what kind of shit is that? White, like a motherfucker, part of the dominant society. But when it's black folk, oh, my God, we'll never hear the end of it. That's why I was so disappointed that we would allow the dominant society to use us as a tool to destroy our own people in that way because at the end of the day all they doing is just moving niggas off the chessboard and, and creating bigger distractions called order out of chaos while we over here bashing r kelly they over here overturning harvey weinstein's convictions and, and, and getting ready to set him up for a great whoop wop and it, look at what they do to p look at what they doing to p diddy look i don't agree with a lot of shit that p diddy has done like for real for real but what i don't like is the constant like okay he settled with cassie all right that's it now here come another motherfucker then you've got whole ass niggas talking about yeah man you know he didn't pay me and he was like he was assaulting me too even when i saw columbus short i was looking at columbus short like nigga why is you saying this shit right now a real nigga be like man i ain't talking about none of that shit hey man i don't fuck with that man like that and i don't wish that on no man and keep it moving Sometimes, it, but niggas be acting like they not gonna be under the microscope. I'm telling you, y'all niggas, I'm telling you, y'all gonna see, y'all just up here counting this man out. Now watch, if they can't get this man, who else do y'all think they gonna go after? They gonna find somebody else. They been doing that shit. That's why I'm saying what I'm saying. When it comes to a person like David Copperfield and you doing magic tricks and you got a residency at the MGM, why ain't the MGM separate from him? The MGM should have told David Carpenter until this is dismissed, we can't allow you to do any type of performances at our hotel because it's just a bad look and we just can't do it. They would have done it to a nigga. Let Usher would have been doing some sucker shit. Man, Caesar's Palace would have built a goddamn prison cell under Caesar's Palace. They'd have been, they'd have been like, hey man, we need to talk to you. Like, man, where we going? Oh man, we just gonna talk to you. And they'd have locked that nigga under the damn jail. That's what they'd have done. They'd have put a prison under the goddamn Caesar's Palace and they would have had Usher's cell. It would have had his name on the cell. And they'd be like, this where you at from now on, nigga. You a nigga. You can't do that shit. But these Diamond Society motherfuckers will do the most obscene, crazy bullshit. I mean, if a girl is saying, hey, man, this man knew what, what Jeffrey Epstein and them was doing. He repeated it to me. So if he knew that, and you over there hanging out doing magic tricks and then pulling out your magic stick, nigga, we know what you was doing. Guilty. You should be under the prison like they do every other foundational black man. I just want us to see that while we up here. Remember, <laughs> racism is a team sport as Dr. Claude Anderson talks about. It's a team sport. When you on the court plantation, it's a team sport. I try, I try to educate people as much as I can, even when I don't want to with my people because my people we're very emotional because of how we have been done and how we have been treated in this country for 500 years so we have a right to be emotional so we have, we have to possess a different type of patience when we're dealing with our people sometimes you gotta you know step away a little bit let them have their time and then sometimes you gotta just kind of educate them like man i don't don't do that because other racial groups they like to watch us be emotional they get a kick out of that shit, and so does the dominant society remember i told you they don't possess no law rhythm that's why they want to be understudies for foundational black Americans so bad why do you think they trying to take credit with, with, with hip hop I'm sorry to keep going and, and diver like our culture and who we are is under attack because we are claiming what is ours and we are taking it back so now that we're taking it back now motherfuckers feel some type of way it's so funny how when we delineate and we want to stand up as foundational black Americans or native blacks as Dr. Klein Anderson call it or American Blacks, or whatever y'all want to call it. We know we from here. We're indigenous to this landmass. All these other immigrant groups, especially Africans. Sorry, y'all. I love y'all, and I got a lot of love, but some of these Africans and Tethers and Coons, man, they get mad. Oh, 
oh, we are all niggas. No, it ain't. Because um, Yvonne Orgy from Insecure and Issa Rae, every time they get an accomplishment, they talk about how much, how they're Nigerian and how Nigerians have to be doctors or lawyers or degrees and all this other shit. That's what they say. But then when it's some negative shit, oh, you know, nigga, that's what I don't, I didn't like about the whole Issa Rae thing when she had Insecure. I'm like, wow, your show is based off foundational black American culture. That's not Nigerian culture. There is no Inglewood in Nigeria. So how are you going to base your whole career and everything off of foundational black American culture? And then when some good come, y'all be talking this I'm Nigerian bullshit. That's what I don't like. I worked with a motherfucker that's from Cameroon. And he, he got a nephew that's in the NFL. And I don't like it. Why, Warren? Because go back to Cameroon. But you're in the United States of fucking America. A country you had no part in building. You fled. You are here for unearned benefits. That's what you're here for. And I'm sick of watching it. And I'm sick of the dominant society and every other racial group getting away with murder while we're being put under a microscope for everything. That's why they're trying to force feed Israel and Palestine on us. That shit didn't work. I'm so proud of black folk. That's why when that sister was at that college in Mississippi up here, put like, what are you doing? You're making a mockery of who you are as a black woman. You don't lower your standards and your vibration to, to put some white people. What? Th those are do those are dominant society people who know who they are and they know where they at. And they in Mississippi. They don't give a fuck about what you talking about. They don't give a fuck about your phone. That's why when she pulled her phone out, they didn't give a fuck about making monkey noises and calling her nigga and all. They don't care about that. Your job is to make sure you care and you understand enough to be like, I don't need to surround myself with that. That's all you're supposed to do. We have to learn from this shit, man. And the reason why I'm saying this is because, again, I wonder if MGM has taken him off of his residency until this blows over. Because they didn't do R. Kelly like that, and they definitely didn't do Bill Cosby like that. They were trying, they publicly assassinated their characters. They destroyed them. They took away, uh, R. Kelly's money. They used other black folk to, to really, really amp up the public attack and humiliation. It was unreal what they did. That's why I don't like I don't like anybody that does that. That's why I don't even watch Love and Hip Hop and all them bullshit shows no more. I don't watch none of them shows anymore because it's almost like y'all want to get Foundation of Black Americans to just act a fool on TV. Why they're non-foundational uh black Americans behind the scenes amping up the bullshit. I don't like that, man. I don't like it. Remember, the racism is a competition of resources. It's a team sport. I don't care what you think it is. It's a team sport. And if we're not on the same page and we're not using our resources and, and, and doing what we need to do to help each other, man, you, you, you clowning. Because come on, man. Clearly, this man, why would a girl say, man, he told me what they was doing when I saw him at Jeffrey Epstein's house. Oh, you know, they be finding bitches and having them fuck everybody, right? So basically, like, bitch, bust down. That's basically what he was saying. See, we may say things different than other racial groups because when we say it, it's cool. Why do you think everybody want to attach themselves to hip hop? Like I said, no diss to 50 Cent or anything like that, but Eminem, he owes us more than what he has given. He's giving you something. He's giving Royce the 5'9 and D12 something. No, nigga, he owes 40 million foundational black Americans way more than that, homie. Way more than that. And I'm going to keep saying it. You are doing us a disservice by not coming out and telling all your white friends, just to let y'all know, I'm not even in the top 20. And y'all have been very disrespectful to the culture and very disrespectful to me because I studied these people before me. And y'all treat them like they ain't shit. Y'all need to be buying their albums. Y'all need to be doing what's... Y'all should be buying all the Karis One's albums and Rakim's old albums and Treacher's old albums. I studied them. That's what you're supposed to be doing. Why, Warren? Because this isn't your fucking culture and you be living in somebody's fucking trailer park right now working at some bullshit steel mill. That's what you would be doing. Man.
Now I went over, man, but I'm sorry. I had to get this one off. Amen. Enjoy y'all day. Y'all do what y'all need to do to survive. Go research David Copperfield out of Las Vegas, Nevada. I feel bad for the employees that work at the Mirage because they tearing that motherfucker down. They tore down the Tropicana. Look, I told, did not tell everybody in Las Vegas. I told everybody in Las Vegas when they first built that stadium. I said, you might as well kiss, kiss the old Vegas goodbye. This is the new LA without a beach and the fucked up weather and the high ass fucking power bills and all that other sucker shit. So kiss the old Vegas goodbye. Because the new one is arriving. They finna be tearing up a lot of shit and rebuilding it. And they're gonna cater to the people that are on the outside. That's why so many people from California and everywhere else is moving to goddamn Vegas. But anyway, that is my time. Guilty nigga. You already know what it is, you know what it ain't. I'm out. <laughs> Peace. <laughs> We gonna play. I got the magic stick for that whole ass nigga up there doing magic. You doing magic tricks all right, motherfucker. <laughs> A goddamn rapist <laughs> doing that shit. Man, I'm out. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs>